Okay, now if I really zoom in on this digital painting, I can see that the face is more refined than the rest of it, right? So how do I kind of bring everything to the same level? I use that soft, low opacity brush. I'm actually going to keep it at a flow that's a little less than 100 too. And that's just going to help it reveal what's underneath a little bit more. And so as I refine and soften and massage these colors, it will all work together. But that doesn't mean I want my highlights to get watered down or my uh, shadows or color to get weaker. And that's why I do it on a separate layer just in case. And why I have bold colors over here to steal from anytime I need them. Bless you. But I got, I have so many colors now to like pull from that I don't really need to go to that reference all that often. And if I need to, I still have this whole layer of whiskers I can put up at the top. And I can even move that layer around. Okay. And then lock what I don't want to paint on. So to finish off, I love how the navigator kind of shows you it in full. I can turn my references back on to steal, steal from. are those? There they are. It's interesting. I should be able to see them. But I also have it open in preview here. And so really I can just use my brush, nothing but my brush, on my refined paint layer here. And just confidently work through it. softening some of these these transitions and you want to stay bold and strong throughout so that kind of everything gets touched and refined So the key is custom soft edge brushes at lower opacities, kind of layering over each other. And the hardest thing for me at this point is to, to still embrace color and oddity, like weird stylistic choices instead of just trying to match the photo exactly. We want you to embrace your individuality here. See what you end up with. And each time I layer over with a different color, that gives me another color, another nuanced color I can blend with. So you can see what this is doing. Giving that softer texture to the fur. I go into the dark fur. Same thing. Lights into darks, darks into lights, start blending and working in between. And I'm going in the direction with this pressure sensitive brush of the, uh, of the fur on the cat. So each stroke kind of reinforces 
what the body is doing. A lot of you are doing portraits of people, so you can think about the individual kind of skin cells and the wrinkles in the face, and you want your brush strokes to kind of go along the surface of the face in those same directions. I'm just going to up my opacity a little bit, closer to 50. Just to move this along a little bit. Now the main focal point is going to be obviously the face of the cat, but I don't want the rest to look so unfinished that it distracts. So that's altogether that's called uh, having finish in a in a work when everything is fully considered, and that might be a tall order for this project because we're just getting introduced to digital painting, but it's definitely something you want from your final project for the semester. That will be graded by your fellow students that every aspect of it has a feeling of being considered and it has finish. So it doesn't feel like we're looking at an unfinished exercise. Sometimes we have the time for that, sometimes we don't. Huh, I don't know why that keeps happening. I think I moved accidentally to the crop tool. So my finger is hovering over the, the option button. I want to be careful not to hit something else besides the option button. Or I can get in trouble. And by layering up the different opacities, I can really control the overall feel. You know, so I'm doing a lot, even though it, it can look like I'm not. This is all the stuff I've just been painting now. And if you remember when we were doing our creature composites and we would use clone stamp, to kind of copy the texture of one animal and blend it in with the texture of another. Here we're creating everything ourselves just with pixels and our brush. But if I wanted to, I could use clone stamp for myself here and steal some of this complexity. <laughs> I'll show you what that would look like. So I just take clone stamp. I'm going to use it fairly soft edged, fairly large at, let's say, a 50% opacity, 60% opacity from the current layer. I'll do a pressure sensitive for the brush and I steal it holding down option and then I can just paint it over. You know where the fur is dark I can paint in what I've already painted where the fur is dark. Where the fur is light I can paint over where the fur is light. And the difference is I am now clone stamping with my own brush strokes. So this. And it can make a lot of sense. It can help you get a clean finish to everything. And then of course you need to look at your reference and, and restate where you might need additional shadows and additional detail. Also, we're asking a lot of photo P at this resolution. And I have a few too many layers going on. So it might be a good idea to consolidate those. So I'm going to unlock some of these. And then just make all of this do what's called merging the layer. Right click and merge that group. That saves a lot of memory. And then lock it so I don't accidentally paint on it. 
and then save and update your work. Because this is always the point where PhotoP starts to get kind of weird as you're finishing it off. If you ever notice your brush slowing down, it's a good time to save. Reset your work. I'm using yellows and purples, complementary colors, to get the most out of this back leg and the highlight on it. Remember to use the pressure sensitivity of your brush. Get as many varied brush strokes as you can to define the form. And I'm not the type of digital artist, usually, that tries to erase all my brush strokes. But a good tool for that, and a tool I want you to know, if you're really going for smoothness, is the smudge tool. It's in the drawer above Dodge and Burn. And the smudge tool will push edges back and forth. It takes a lot of processing. But like, let's say this highlight on the paw I want to soften and push around. Works especially good on kind of soft, non-reflective uh, surfaces. Because I can, like blending with my finger, kind of push it into different directions. And it will soften it as I go. So if you want that really kind of smudged, airbrushed, clean, soft-edged look for your painting, you can use a smudge tool just like you can kind of finger paint and smudge into a traditional painting. I don't mind seeing the, the heavy brush strokes some places. I like the difference between harder edged and softer edged in the paint surface. Complementary colors are always fun to play with, like green and red, purple and yellow, orange and blue. Having just a little bit of the strong color on the outside of the other colors makes all of it seem more vibrant, even if they're not that realistic. So just different color theory and paint experiments you can play with. Okay, now I got to deal with the tail, which is kind of lost in the photograph. So I, I largely get to define how this will look. Just using my custom brush, layering in some color, some of that red in there, for the haunch, and the shadow underneath the leg. going to save because my brush is slowing down a little bit. I'm going to save all these pixels. All right, there we go. Now the foot. work between some of these colors. And I might even go to this base color and cut it out a little bit more cleanly just with my lasso before I add on with finished paint. So it's not always that a white background does us any favors, but it does help us see when we have stray marks or the silhouette's not working and we can cut away from it. 